managed to get my hands on a Mach 1 Summit 2, which is the latest smart watch running Qualcomm's Wear OS specific chipset, the 3100, which supposedly increases battery life, which is something that Wear OS really needs. In addition to that, it's made by a normal watch manufacturer who's pretty high end called Mont Blanc, whose watches are normally made from higher end materials and retail for thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So let's see what this mix up of old school and new school ideals is all about in this complete walkthrough. Now, if you're not familiar, complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the styling. You can get in a few different materials. You have the option of a DLC coated black steel, bicolor steel, stainless steel, and titanium. You also have a ton of options for the straps as well, from calves leather to Milanes loops, nylon, etc. Since it does utilize quick release bands though, you can technically use any 22 millimeter strap and the casing only comes in one unisex size, 42 millimeters. Under the watch, the heart rate sensor is encased in a strengthened sapphire glass that is more resistant to scratching than the normal glass most companies use, as well as a fiberglass black resin. And on the top glass, we have more sapphire glass as well. Built in, we have all the expected things in a Wear OS smartwatch, thankfully. GPS, NFC, heart rate monitor, etc. they're all here. The charger, however, is pretty trash. Because of the band that comes with it and the way that it closes, and the fact that the charger needs to sit directly under the watch, there's no real easy way to charge this without it falling off. And considering the price of this watch, it just seems like a bit of an oversight. The only way you can really charge it is by kind of sitting it on its side in this awkward position. Now on the side of the case, we have a stainless steel rotating crown that is supposed to resemble the Mont Blanc crown from 1885, this one, that you can then use to navigate Wear OS and click in to select things or to get to your list of installed apps. On either side of that, we have a button. The top one can be used to bring you a personalized fitness coach that you set up your fitness levels and goals and it supposedly helps you achieve them. And the bottom one will bring up Google Pay, which you can use the NFC on the device to tap it to a payment terminal and pay using that. Everything else can be done on the screen, of course, with a swipe to the right bringing you back to the previous screen, scrolling with your finger, and tapping to select as usual. Since the OS is made by Google, as is Android, any Android phone you pair with it has possibly the most integration it can with that watch. Things like notifications you can get to by swiping up from the bottom of the screen all come up as you'd expect and can be interacted with, responded to using voice, swipeable keyboards, etc. Swiping to the left gives you access to your Google Assistant and all the cards, event reminders, etc. that that comes with. Swiping to the right gives us quick access to Google Fit, your rings for your move goal and heart points, as well as step counts, calories burned, miles walked, heart rate, etc. You can also head to the Play Store through the Wear OS app on your phone to download from the plethora of apps that work with Wear OS, which include most of the major players you'd expect at this point, so that's helpful if you use specific health apps, for example. Swiping down from the top of the watch, you can also get to quick actions like you can in Android. Here, you have ones for disabling the screen so it doesn't disturb you in a theater, for example, a full do not disturb so notifications are silenced, battery saver mode, ping your phone, turn on and off Google Pay, and airplane mode. You can also tap the gear icon to get to all of your normal Wear OS settings. Then there's the battery life. Since it is a normal OS called a GPOS and not a real-time OS, an RTOS, it's using a lot of resources respectively to just run, and that means less battery life. The Summit 2 lasts me from waking up to going to sleep, but that's it. If you forget to charge it one night, it won't last the next day at all. In fact, it has an annoying feature where it goes into watch mode and then only displays the time. This lets it last up to two weeks or so apparently, so at least you still have a watch, which is a novel concept, but it can't be turned off until you plug it in and it turns itself on automatically without any warning. Now besides the battery life being the major downside to Wear OS, this in particular comes with another pain point, the price. It's $1,000, and the titanium one, that's $1,100. Now, most Wear OS watches are closer to the $300 mark, and granted, they're not made out of sapphire, usually, but they are stainless steel, at least, and even from known designers like the Scoggin Falster 2, or from higher-end designers like the Movado Connect for about $600. Even the Apple Watch with a stainless steel case and band will run you about $800. Now, all of these, besides the Apple Watch, run Android Wear OS and will have similar battery life and do mostly the same functions. The only difference here for the $1,000 is the bit more premium materials maybe and the name Mont Blanc. 
Now, I'm not one to buy watches for the name brand and have a particular style I go for, so take that with a grain of salt. And perhaps if you are someone who likes Mont Block watches a lot, and now you can get a smartwatch version that can do more than just tell the time, so long as you charge it when you go to bed, of course, then $1,000 for a Mont Blanc watch is actually a good deal, I guess. Let me know what you guys think of a $1,000 Wear OS smartwatch in the comments below. Would you guys buy one? Is the name that important? Do you own Mont Blanc watches maybe and you're watching this and you're curious about this watch? How do you feel about it? I'd love to hear from you as well. Otherwise, if you like the video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ding the bell next to where to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. And check out my email newsletter. I've linked it below. It's gonna give you all the videos once a week. It's not annoying, I promise, that I do here on the YouTube channel, but it'll also give you the tips and tricks and news and other things I do on the website um, that don't necessarily make it here to video if that's something you're into. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.